Supreme Commander Korvac stared grimly at the asteroid field that had once been a vibrant human civilization, utterly annihilated in the ancient war 50,000 years ago. He stood rigid on the bridge of his command ship, dark memories of the brutal conflict replaying in his mind as he surveyed the debris field through the viewport. Commander, scans show an unnatural structure on Asteroid 72X, reported his executive officer Xyloth, mandibles clicking with excitement. It appears to be an intact human cryo-chamber from before the war. Korvac's hearts pounded at this startling discovery. Humanity's cryogenic technologies were thought lost to the ages, destroyed along with their empire five millennia ago, and yet here one apparently still remained, entombed within lifeless rock, still powered after eons adrift. Ready a dropship, Korvac commanded, already striding towards the armory to don his combat exoskeleton. I will retrieve this chamber myself. Sir, is that wise? Xyloth protested, hurrying to keep pace. We have no idea what's inside. It could be... I am well aware of the risks, Korvac growled. Xyloth fell silent, knowing not to press further when the Supreme Commander used that tone. Korvac flexed his claws within the exoskeleton's gauntlets as the dropship descended towards Asteroid 72X. Anticipation and curiosity burned through his veins. If a human had somehow survived within that ancient sarcophagus, their knowledge of pre-war Earth could change the future of the Prylorian Empire itself. And if this was a trap or some other danger, Korvac would face it head-on, as he always did. The implications weighed heavily on his mind as the excavation began, particle beam cutters straining to extract the cryo-chamber from its rocky tomb. Korvac had to know its secrets, no matter the cost. The cryo-chamber hissed and popped as it completed its transit from the dropship into the command vessel's quarantine bay. Korvac watched through the observation window, claws twitching as chief researcher Zolak's team swarmed over the ancient device. They scanned it from every angle, mandibles clicking and antennae waving. Supreme Commander, this is simply incredible, Zolak said over the comm. The stasis field has held perfectly after all this time. The occupant is completely preserved. Korvac leaned closer to the window. What can you tell me about them? Preliminary scans indicate an adult human male, but Sir... Zolak paused. I must caution against opening the chamber. There's no telling what ancient diseases he might carry. Our immune systems would be defenseless. Korvac barely heard him. His heart thundered like war drums as he stared at the cryo-chamber. To look upon a living human, an enemy his species had battled so long ago, he had to see it, had to understand the foe that had nearly brought the Prylorians to their knees. I'm overriding your concerns, Korvac said. Thaw him out now. Zolak clicked in agitation but obeyed. His team rushed to initiate the thawing sequence. Heating arrays hummed to life around the chamber. Suddenly, alarms screeched throughout the ship. Korvac snarled and slapped the wallcom. Bridge report. Commander, long-range sensors have picked up a massive wormhole signature, the tactical officer said, voice tense. It's a Kratorian invasion fleet. They'll be on us in minutes. Korvac cursed viciously, the Kratorians were relentless insectoid warriors that had hounded the Prylorian Empire for generations. They must have detected the energy spikes from the excavation. Go to battle stations, Korvac ordered. I'm on my way. He spun to head for the bridge. A sudden hiss stopped him cold. He whirled back to the quarantine bay. The cryo chamber was open. Frigid gas vented from the sides as the lid lifted. Korvac gaped in disbelief. The thawing process should have taken an hour at minimum, but the human was already moving. A single pale hand emerged from the swirling mist. Fingers, strange and alien with too few joints, curled around the edge of the sarcophagus. The hand tensed, tendons pulling taut. And then, with impossible strength, the human began to push himself up. The human rose from the cryo-chamber in one smooth, fluid motion. He stood tall, his body lean and muscular, Clearly in peak physical condition, his eyes, a piercing blue that seemed to glow with an inner light, scanned the room calmly, taking in every detail. 
He wore a black battle suit that clung to his frame like a second skin, emblazoned with insignia Korvac had never seen before. Where am I? the human demanded in perfect Prilorian. His accent was strange, the words slightly archaic, but still understandable. Who are you? Korvac stepped forward, hearts pounding. He had to force himself not to reach for his sidearm, so ingrained were his instincts to view humans as the enemy. I am Supreme Commander Korvac of the Prilorian Empire, he said. You are aboard my command ship. You've been in stasis for fifty thousand years. The human's eyes widened. He staggered slightly, catching himself on the edge of the cryo chamber. Fifty thousand years, he whispered. Then straightening, Commander Andrew Evans, Earth Defense Force, what happened to the war? Where are the rest of my people? Korvac opened his mouth to reply, but the ship suddenly bucked violently beneath them. Alarms blared as the deck shuddered, nearly throwing them off their feet. Commander, the Kratorians are firing on us, Xyloth's voice crackled over the comm. Korvac snarled. He spun to Andrew. We're under attack by an insectoid race called the Kratorians. I must get to the bridge. You... I'm coming with you, Andrew interrupted. His eyes blazed with determination. If we're in a fight, I'm not sitting it out. Absolutely not, Zolak protested. Supreme Commander, we have no idea what pathogens he might be carrying. The risk... Korvac waved him off. He recognized the look in Andrew's eyes. It was the same indomitable spirit that had made humans such formidable adversaries long ago, the same refusal to back down in the face of overwhelming odds. Against his better judgment, Korvac unclipped a pulse rifle from his armor and tossed it to Andrew. The human caught it smoothly, checking the charge with practiced efficiency. Let's go, Korvac said. They raced through the corridors, the ship shaking around them as Kratorian fire pounded the shields. Crew members scrambled in every direction, hurrying to battle stations. As they ran, Korvac couldn't shake the feeling that this was more than mere coincidence. The humans' awakening, the Kratorian attack. It was almost as if the universe itself had willed it, as if, after fifty thousand years, the ancient conflict was beginning anew. And this time Korvac had a human fighting by his side. The bridge was a hive of frantic activity as Korvac stormed onto the command deck, Andrew close on his heels. The view screens showed the Kratorian fleet bearing down on them, their ships sleek and predatory, bristling with advanced weaponry that made the Prilorians' own vessels look like relics from a bygone era. Status report, Korvac barked, his eyes darting over the tactical displays. They outnumber us three to one, Commander, Xyloth replied his claws flying over the console, and their firepower is significantly superior to ours. Korvac growled deep in his throat. The situation looked grim, but he refused to show any sign of fear or doubt in front of his crew. Hersum defensive formation Delta-6, he ordered. Concentrate all fire on the lead dreadnought. We need to punch a hole in their line. The crew scrambled to comply the ship shuddering as the first volleys of Kratorian fire slammed into their shields. Andrew, meanwhile, had stepped up to the tactical display, his eyes narrowed as he studied the readouts with an intensity that Korvac found both unnerving and strangely familiar. There, Andrew said suddenly, pointing to a pulsing red icon on the schematic of the Kratorian dreadnought. That's a weak point in their shields right above the main power core. Korvac peered at the display, Mandibles twitching in skepticism. How could you possibly know that? Andrew met his gaze, and for a moment Korvac saw a flicker of something ancient and haunted in those piercing blue eyes. Because I fought them before, Andrew said quietly. In my time I know their ships, their tactics, trust me. Korvac hesitated, every instinct screaming at him not to put his faith in a human. But then another blast rocked the ship. Sparks flying from overloaded consoles, and he realized they had no other choice. Hurl ships, focus fire on that weak point, Korvac roared. Pour everything we have into it. For a heartbeat, nothing happened. Then, as the combined might of the Prilorian fleet converged on that single spot, the dreadnought's shields flickered and died, the titanic vessel suddenly vulnerable. 
Fire, Korvac commanded. A lance of pure energy erupted from his ship's main cannon, piercing the dreadnought's hull like a spear through flesh. For a moment, the behemoth hung in space, a gaping wound in its side, and then it exploded, consumed from within by a chain reaction of ruptured power conduits and overloading reactors. The bridge crew erupted in cheers as the dreadnought's shattered remnants spun away, but Korvac silenced them with a sharp gesture. Press the attack, he ordered. Target the weak points the human has identified. With Andrew calling out vulnerabilities and Korvac directing the fleet to exploit them, they began to push the Kratorians back, the tide of battle slowly turning. Hope began to surge in Korvac's hearts. And then a new wave of ships emerged from the wormhole, so massive they seemed to blot out the stars. At their centre was a colossal super-dreadnought, a behemoth that dwarfed any other vessel on the field. Korvac felt that hope wither and die as the monstrous ship lumbered towards them. Even with Andrew's knowledge, they were hopelessly outmatched. He turned to the human, an apology on his lips. And paused. Andrew was staring at the approaching Leviathan, but there was no fear in his eyes. Instead, a strange, almost feral gleam had appeared, his lips curled in what might have been a smile. I think, Andrew said softly, that it's time for round two. Andrew's eyes gleamed with a feral intensity as he turned to Korvac. His lips curled into a grim smile, a stark contrast to the desperation that gripped the bridge. Commander, I have a plan. It's a long shot. But it might be our only chance, Andrew said, his voice steady despite the chaos erupting around them. Korvac met his gaze, mandibles twitching with uncertainty. What do you propose? I need a strike team. We board that super dreadnought and take it out from the inside. The Supreme Commander recoiled, his claws clenching. Board it? That's suicide! Andrew shook his head. The Kratorians won't expect it. They think we're beaten, and I know their ships. I can get us to the power core. Korvac hesitated, his instincts warring with the cold logic of Andrew's words. The human's tactical acumen had already proven invaluable, and with the Kratorian Leviathan bearing down on them, what choice did they have? Very well, Korvac growled, but I'm coming with you. He turned to Ziloth, assemble our best warriors, meet us in the shuttle bay. As they raced through the corridors, the ship shuddering under the relentless Kratorian assault, Andrew outlined his plan. We'll approach under cloak, he explained checking his pulse rifle. Once we're aboard, we make for the power core. I can modify their own weaponry to overload it. Should set off a chain reaction that'll rip that behemoth apart. Korvac nodded grimly. It was a daring plan, but one that just might work. The strike team assembled in the shuttle bay, a dozen of the Prilorian Empire's most elite soldiers. They boarded the shuttle, Andrew taking the pilot's seat. As they launched... Korvac couldn't suppress a twinge of unease. Here he was, entrusting the fate of his empire to a human, a species that had once been their greatest enemy. But as he watched Andrew deftly maneuver the shuttle towards the super-dreadnought, he found his doubts fading. There was something about this human, a strength and determination that inspired confidence. They docked with the Kratorian ship, the shuttle's cloak holding. With Andrew in the lead, they stormed out, pulse rifles blazing as they cut through the startled insectoid crew. They fought their way deeper into the ship, Andrew's knowledge of Kratorian design guiding them unerringly towards the power core. But as they neared their objective, resistance intensified. Kratorian soldiers swarmed from every corridor, their chitin armor deflecting the strike team's fire. Korvac found himself back to back with Andrew, fighting for his life as the Kratorians pressed in. The human was a whirlwind of motion, his rifle spitting death with every shot. At last, they reached the power core, a pulsing mass of energy that thrummed with barely contained power. Andrew rushed to the control panel, his fingers flying over the unfamiliar controls. But as he worked, a fresh wave of Kratorians surged into the chamber. The strike team met them head-on, but they were outnumbered and exhausted. Korvac saw his soldiers falling one by one, their blood mingling with the ichor of the Kratorians. 
And then, just as Andrew let out a triumphant shout, signaling that his modifications were complete, a stray shot caught him in the chest. He staggered, his rifle clattering to the deck. Korvac was at his side in an instant, catching him as he fell. Andrew! The human coughed, blood flecking his lips, but his eyes were clear as they met Korvac's. It's done, he rasped. Get your team out, go! I'm not leaving you, Korvac growled, even as the remaining Kratorians closed in. Andrew shook his head. With a trembling hand, he reached out and activated the overload sequence. You have to, he whispered. Someone has to tell our story. Remember us, Korvac. Remember humanity. And with those words, Commander Andrew Evans, the last of the Earth Defense Force, breathed his last. Korvac stared down at him, a profound sense of loss and respect welling within him. But there was no time to grieve. He gathered his remaining warriors and fought his way back to the shuttle, Andrew's final words echoing in his mind. They barely made it aboard before the Super Dreadnought exploded, a blinding flash of light that momentarily outshone the stars. The chain reaction tore through the Kratorian fleet, leaving only shattered ruins in its wake. In the aftermath of the battle, as the battered Prylorian ships regrouped, Korvac stood on the bridge gazing out at the starfield where the human had made his final stand. Andrew Evans had sacrificed everything to save an empire that had once sought humanity's destruction. In doing so, he had shown Korvac a glimpse of what could have been if their species had found a way to coexist. As he set a course for Pryloria to bring news of this unprecedented victory and the hero who had made it possible, Korvac vowed that Andrew's sacrifice would not be forgotten. He would ensure that the story of humanity's final triumphant stand would be remembered for generations to come. For in that moment, the galaxy had been irrevocably changed, and so had Korvac, his perceptions shattered and remade by the indomitable spirit of a species that had risen from the ashes of history to leave an indelible mark on the future. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.